these aren't finished in any way, but just to show you texture and what how I use printing in my process of working through ideas. Hi, my name is Jean Wolf. This is the Westbeth Graphics Printmaking Studio. I'm a painter and a printmaker. I'm thrilled to be part of this studio. It gives me access to equipment that would not be available to most artists because it's expensive. So it's great that this exists for the printmakers in Westbeth. I think it's really important along with the other studios that they offer in the building. That's so much about what Westbeth is and also what's m what we're starting to lose in New York City, unfortunately. Printmaking is a tool. I think most people find print, most artists I know find printmaking technical, tedious, unspontaneous. If you are not a printmaker by training and you work with a master printer, you can find so many amazing ways of making beautiful prints. That's part of what prints were, where they were about additions and making work accessible. Um, to the masses, to people, to collectors. Since the 60s, really with Tamarin Press, printmaking had a renaissance in terms of an art form. And with Picasso, Frank Stella, and Toulouse-Lautrec, really had, um, really manipulated that medium for his posters and made him, you know, introduced a lot of techniques that we still use today, instead of just making it a reproductive process, which is really what printmaking was. It was reproductive. This is a standard copper plate. It, this was a soft ground um, process, drawing through a soft ground um, and removing the, the, um, removing the ground, which would be a acid resist ground. It's a very light grid to res resemble graph paper. And it was a plate for an, a, an addition that I did a couple years ago. And usually for additions, they steel plate these so the plates don't degrade. Um, after a while, especially with copper, um, and especially with dry point and etching, you lose the edge of, a, um, of an image. They call it burr, and they're so beautiful and so velvety. And, but the press will wear it down over time and steel facing keeps the image crisp. This is what one would draw on, quote unquote, create your image and then go to press with it. These are not using the, this particular plate. My work involves folded paper and folding grids and it becomes part of the, the surface of the work that I do. These are color proofs, these are aquatints, which are a lot of fun to print, <laughs> um, and especially something like this because the ink can gum up very much. But again, it was this process etched in an acid bath, and then these are color proofs for me to approve the color to go and print an addition. So these are just samples. This is cobalt blue. This is a, a carmine red, and they're different plates. Again, what I do with my plates, I draw images, and I have a tendency to print over them because, again, it's a way of mixing color without mixing color. I used to do a lot of experiments with red, yellow, blue and printing the plates in different um, sequences and they would all look very different. Recently, just to show you an example of the embossing, I have made what most printmakers would call these as color graph. They could be inked like a plate, but I'm using them just for embossing. If you could see the back side, this is a plate and there's the embossed paper and then I've worked back through and drawn back into it. It's a great opportunity to be able to experiment this way. I have a separate studio, not in Westbeth, um, where I do paint, but because um, um, I have a partner and there's not enough room to work in, the, work in our living space. It's, it's great to have this here, to be able to explore these ideas and then translate them into painting. And they're not just separate, but they do, the, it's interesting what happens in printmaking, the happy accidents. I don't like to plan everything out. I like, I like what happens in the process, and printmaking is a real process.